peeps and welcome back to another deep Woods paranormal podcast i am just leaving work so i wanted to get on here and try and get a quick podcast uh so bear with me if there's some road noise or anything else i do have the mic down much lower and i'm hoping it doesn't pick up the audio so loud this time that it's hard to uh understand me so and it doesn't sound like i'm yelling at you so bear with me as i drive home i won't be looking at you 100 percent uh, of the time, but I will try and glance to you as I can, as I legally can. I've got to keep my eyes on the on the road and stuff. So I am completely hands free, not touching the phone at all. Uh, this is completely hands free. So just in case somebody's wondering, um, God, where do I even start? The last two weeks have just been absolutely amazing and insane, and just non-stop. Um, just good stuff, all good stuff, uh, but just all this stuff going on in the background, uh, and it's just taking my time away from doing investigations, our time, Amanda's and my time away from doing investigations, and uh, doing podcasts and all that fun stuff, um, but it's all for this stuff, if you will. Um, so, a lot of lockdowns coming, we've set schedules, we've got them set up, and then once we do our lockdown at these locations, the general public will be able to come in with us and do a two-night overnight stay. Uh, whether you want to do one night or two nights, I'm not sure exactly how we're going to do it. Um, usually, um, the activity is better on the first night, and then it could be even better on the second night. It just depends on what's going on. Um, but we basically, the um, only place that we can't do a public investigation will be one of the jails in Huntsville. Um, this jail is amazing. You've probably seen the videos. Uh, the video just does not do it justice. The video of that old jail is, it's good, but it's not the same quality as what camera that we're using now. And we want to, up, you know, we just upgraded. So we're going to be using a higher quality uh, video. We're going to be there for two full nights to investigate that place. Uh, we will be locked down inside um, inside the um, jail area. Uh, so, and this place gets ridiculously, um, insanely active, especially as the night goes on. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to basically hitting up more areas of the jail. It's not very big. It's only, only like 10 or 12 cells or whatever it is. Um, but they basically... Uh, will allow us to go up there and communicate with whatever. And then we might also go down below and make sure there's nothing down below as well. Um, we have a new ghost box, which I don't know if you guys have seen yet. So we'll be using that. And uh, like I said, this is the only place we can't take the general public to so far. Um, so that's happening. And then we're going to be basically... Um, turning over the results to the clientele and then we'll be doing actually we're going to try and do that right before our vacation Amanda and I are going to take a, a paranormal vacation kind of if you will uh, we are going to Louisiana and then we're going to be going to Galveston um, we might actually be going into the Normandy Inn um, and spending a night or two there as well and just trying to get something to communicate with us there as well. If you've seen the show, the, the original YouTube videos of, or the YouTube shows of the Galveston Inn, you've seen how crazy that place can get. Doors opening and closing by themselves. The speaker box, that woman, oh my gosh, she went nuts. And I don't hope I don't ruin it for anybody. If you've not seen that, you probably want to hold off. Just mute the podcast for a second or two. Anyways, I'm, we're cleaning up on day two. We've been there for two full days, uh, the crew, the whole paranormal team and I, and Amanda and I, and Alex, and I forget who else was there. Um, there was another person with us. We're cleaning up. I asked them to go upstairs and grab the rest of the gear from upstairs. We had camera, video, uh, DVR systems everywhere, all those, you know, running pot water or power in this place. We had used external um, battery chargers and all this stuff to document this place. 
Um, I'm not going to go into the whole show because I, you guys can go back and watch that. It, it, I know it's a long show, but it's just packed with things that happen, paranormal, what I believe to be paranormal. Remember, there's no power in this place. There's no electricity. There's no running water. So if anything basically happens where the K2s light up and stuff, we didn't have our cell phones with us. We were completely away from all that stuff. The only thing we had was EM pumps. That I, on the second day, I smartly left a bunch of EM pumps running throughout the house for like four or five hours before we started our investigation. And that's when they really, the, the ghosts really kind of uh, decided to communicate with us. I apologize for the glare. Again, I am driving. There's nothing I can do about that. It's coming off that mirror over there. And uh, even if I put my hand in front of it, it's not going to stop it. All right. So, yeah, I mean, I'm hoping we stop there for a night, spend a night there, and and then maybe move on um, to doing other things. So that should be fun. Um, I mean, they're going to just kind of take a, a cruise around Texas, if you will. Um, and then we're going to stop and check out some other locations and maybe go to the beach and, and kind of take a quick refresh before we really start hitting it hard. Uh, because once we get going, it's, it's just going to be even worse than it already is. I swear, I, I somebody just pushed their foot on the gas and then someone else put their foot on top of that pedal. And that's what it's been like. Just nonstop. I mean, I'm just, I just nonstop. I get up in the morning, I go, 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 go all day long. And then I get home, I eat real quick and I crash. I go to bed and get up again the next morning. But like I said, it's all good stuff. Um, a lot of stuff going on with my work some changes of work and that's taking a lot of my time. So, um, that's, what's been going on with that. That's why the, a lot of the podcasts have not been coming out lately. I'm going to try and do a better job of doing a podcast on my way in or out of work. So you guys have some podcasts and you can see what's going on. Um, we will take a break every once in a while. Like I told you work with our production schedules and stuff like that going on. Um, there's just a lot of stuff going on. Uh, we're trying to shoot shows for you guys trying to document our investigations um i've talked about our new show that amanda and i are doing it's just an internet show uh it'll be on both rumble and youtube and if it does well we might move some other places too uh we'll see but anyways um cattle mutilation is every time i try and finish this out oh well we need to go back and do this now we need to go back and do that now we gotta you know it's a learning curve doing productions because I'm looking at video and I have like five, six hours. No, I have like 50, 60 hours of video and I trimmed it down to about oh, 10 minutes and it's just not enough for a show. There's just not enough content yet. Um, we, we spent all that time going to all these places um, in Hearn and in, in Bryan, College Station, Navasota, uh, Manola, uh, excuse me, uh, Mineola, whatever, however you pronounce that. Sorry if I butchered that. Um, but yeah, we've been we've been all over the place doing research, uh, trying to spot things uh, to get you guys some kind of content, and we just haven't had much luck. But from what I hear, I keep getting more and more people saying, "Oh, it's happening here," and it's like, "Well, we were just there, and we didn't see." It. <laughs> it's it's frustrating as heck. Um, you know, the ghosts are better behaved. They, they kind of sometimes will communicate with you if you ask them to. But anyways, so, yeah, well, I don't know what I'm going to do with that show. I'm, I'm really honestly getting tired of it. It's just getting really drawn out. Um, and that may just get put on the back burner until we can finish that out. But we, um, yeah, so like I said, we have several lockdowns coming out. We have two jails. Uh, we also have the San Jacinto Jail. We're going to be doing a lockdown at the San Jacinto Jail for two nights as well. Uh, we'll have full access to not just the jail, the old school, the library, I'm sorry, the old school, the um, train depot, and the post office, and the grounds. Um, did I mention there's possible Bigfoots that come over into that area too? So we'll be listening for Bigfoots too. There's a lot of shadows that dart around the courtyard of that old town. Um, there's a couple of buildings that burned down or flooded in that old town that are no longer there. So a lot of these buildings have been brought in, but they still have a lot of activity, especially at old schoolhouse. 
So uh, we got to wait for the weather to cool down a little bit because there's no air conditioning in these buildings. And again, that'll be a place that you guys could come with us and spend um, one or two nights there. I'm not sure what the price is going to be yet, but um, we have to we have to be able to pay for the events uh, and get charged for us to be there. So, and we need to give back a little bit to them as well for letting us come all the way out there and do that investigation. Um, and then we'll have like I just got some new hats, some Bigfoot hats. Uh, everybody's asking me about the alien hats. Uh, I'm gonna try and order those soon too. Um, we have let's see what else is going on with us. Um, so lock two lockdowns in two different jails. Uh, we have a lockdown at the, um, we're working on a lockdown at the Woodbine Hotel. They're still working on stuff, still renovating things. So we're waiting for them to finish that. We're not sure when that's going to happen. My friend is kind of keeping me, uh, updated on that. So thank you to him if he's listening. Um, what else do we have? We have the Normandy Inn in Galveston, Texas. Um, that's coming up, I believe. That'll be actually a Halloween special. We're gonna be locked down two nights in that house. I, I don't know. I find the house pretty damn creepy. Any house where they've done voodoo and satanic rituals, um, I don't know. That should be interesting. But like I said before, we've we've kind of debunked those claims. Uh, the last time we were there, we just came across the four spirits: the woman, the man, and the two kids. Uh, and again, you can go back and watch the Normandy Inn video uh, if you want. I think there's actually two, uh, and I may have broken it up into parts. So uh, the very end, the end of the last video, um, the long one, you will see what happens um, to me. As a spirit box would not shut up. That woman, you need to go. It's time for you to go. You need to leave. Leave now. <laughs> she just... Oh my gosh, she was just going nuts. I apologize for the quality of the audio of that video. Uh, that speaker, that camera only took an external mic. And unfortunately, the mic on there was a $300 mic, but it just didn't work real well with that camera. So the new camera we have now, I don't even have to put a mic on it. it the audio is just so clear. It's more of a pro much more professional camera. So we won't have that problem again, I don't think. And then, of course, Amanda and I will probably be all mic'd up wherever we go. Um, we will allow for guest investigators. I've got a few friends that I know want to come out and check things out. Um, we might even have a camera person for some of these events. Um, and we're working with somebody on possibly following us around, which would be awesome because then we can focus on just investigating and not have to worry about trying to get every single view and Amanda and I will just carry some handy cams so that if we do experience something you guys can see it It'll, it's just going to improve uh, the quality of our, our show I think it'll be more like what you see on TV which is I think what people like without the oh did you hear that oh my gosh what's that you know I know I know people hate that they hate the fake crap we're 100% real so just FYI if you're waiting for the investigations I apologize for taking so long but we're focused on trying to get them shot. And once we get about two or three of them, hopefully we'll have them out again every one. I'm trying to get them out every Friday for you guys. One, one Friday a month. I mean, every Friday, every month. Um, so that'd be like four investigations a week is the goal. So uh, once that gets done, uh, we should be good. And then we'll, we'll keep going from there. So um, I think we have investigations locked down all the way through. We have lockdowns set up once a month all the way through till December. And we may go back to some places several times. I'm not sure if we're going to do it multiple times. But um, so, yeah, that's coming down the pike. Um, big footers, my big footers. I haven't forgotten about you. Uh, we're, we're still investigating the um, Sam Houston National Forest, and we're working with Joe to go back to Joe's. He's up in the Sabine National Forest, and he's surrounded by thousands of reports of Bigfoots. His neighbors, his friends, his family, they've all experienced it, especially on his property. So we're working on setting up other locations. We're working with other people up there. 
to try and go up and, and uh, investigate um, not just his property for two nights, but we'll be doing probably more. Um, and then we'll, uh, well, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag. We bought an RV. <laughs> oh, man, I am so excited about the RV. Um, so, yeah, we just we just opened up a huge opportunity for us to travel pretty much anywhere and everywhere, not just in Texas. So we have this RV now. It's 30 feet long. We can, can sleep six. So we can have uh, other investigators with us. Uh, we'll be towing that around to different investigations from here on out. So we can spend weekends at the location and not have to worry about spending all this money on hotel rooms or trying to find somebody up to, you know, can we just stay at your house for the night? You know what I mean? It's a little annoying for that person and, and it's kind of sad for us as well. So, yeah, I mean, that'll be exciting. That'll give us opportunities to shoot in places that we, have, we haven't ever shot it before and done do investigations in places we haven't done before. Um, we're still going to try and get more remote as well, get out more and in, deeper into the forest of places where people don't go that often and do an investigation out there. I know there's a couple of Facebook groups that go out into the Sam Houston uh, National Forest, and I'd like to try and go out with them as well and document what they do and, and do an investigation with them as well and just see if we can get anything. Um, but yeah, that's that's coming up in the, in the future. But yeah, we're going to be doing a lot of investigating here um, in the next five to six months. We've got a lot of shows we want to do. Uh, we're still looking for other locations. We're also looking for more people. If you're interested in coming out with us, uh, being a guest investigator on the show for a night, um, as long as you're not afraid to be on camera, um, we'd love to have you. Um, so yeah, you know, go again on our YouTube and Rumble channels uh, if you're watching on one or the other. But yeah, so that's what's going on. Um, we're just like I said, we're just just busy, busy, busy between my work and setting up things and and, and helping people. Uh, I'm still working a pretty tough case, actually two tough cases. Um, I have a, a, a new local client that could possibly also have Bigfoots coming through or onto his property. And we've heard tree knocks and stuff like that. I've talked about it before. Uh, we're working on setting up investigations at his property. Um, and then I would like to start reaching out to more locations uh, around where we are for Bigfoots. Uh, there's a lot of Bigfoot activity in and around our area. Like I said, now that we have an RV, uh, we can do what's called boondocking. We can go out to a location, fill up the tanks with water. Uh, we'll have a, a serviceable, bath, serviceable bathroom um, so that we can do what we need to do there. We'll have a full-on kitchen, and we'll have a place to comfortably sleep so we can rest up and, and get out of the next morning if we want to or late in the evening. And maybe, you know, being parked out in these locations, I don't know how many times I've heard stories of people having their trailer shaken or something peering into their trailer or whatever. Um, so, you know, and I've, I've had it happen to me. I looked, I was at Joe's camp and that one night it was just pouring rain. Uh, we were in a, you know, severe, severe, severe rainstorm. Um, the lightning was actually hitting the trees. It was scary as crap, just destroying trees. As trees are blowing up by it being hit by lightning and stuff. Uh, thank God we didn't get any tornadoes dropped on our, our exact location. But as I'm laying there, it's probably 2 o'clock in the morning. We're just waiting for the weather to clear up. I'm trying to get a quick nap. I'm looking out the little window. I'm laying in his little bunk area. And I can see out into the forest uh, every time the lightning goes off because it looks like somebody just flips the lights on for about two or three seconds. And there's a freaking Bigfoot just standing there. It had to be about eight feet tall, maybe about three or four feet wide. It wasn't super huge. Uh, it was probably, you know, if you took two or three of me and, you know, kind of put me together, um, that was pretty much what it was like. And essentially it was just standing there and I could see the, the water dripping off the fur. It's something I'll never forget. It was the craziest thing I've ever, well, not the craziest, but one of the crazier things I've seen in my paranormal research. So 
yeah, just just cool experiences. I can't wait to go back to Joe's. I want to go see what's going on up there. Um, this is we're coming up on what I believe to be mating season, and this is the point in time where Bigfoots uh, will start to get more active. Um, especially as it starts to cool off. So all late August into September, you're going to start hearing more tree knocks, I believe. I think you're going to start hearing if you're in an area where you, you know, live around Bigfoots or you have them coming through their property. I've talked to several people that have said that they come through their property and they throw like things at their house. They hear the screams, they hear the tree knocks, they hear the whoops. Um, and stuff like that, and they can hear things walking around at night. But I think if you're in one of those places, uh, in the next couple, three or four months, you're going to start experiencing that quite a bit. Probably all the way till end of January, I would guess. Um, I think that's when they meet. They meet in the winter, you know, the fall and the winter times. And then essentially, I think that after that, they kind of go quiet. Uh, I think what happens is this is when road crossings start to happen. And I think that what happens is that the juveniles, the young teens, will actually start to fan out and look for other Bigfoot uh, colonies, if you will, or families or whatever you want to call them. Uh, they'll start to you know, reach out and go trying to find other places to um, make more Bigfoots, if you will. So, yeah, these are exciting times. Uh, in the next four to five months... We're going to try and document as much as we can. Um, we've got to go back to the Sabine National Forest. We've got to go back to the Sam Houston National Forest. I like to get into the Daniel Boone National Forest. I've heard there's a lot of reports from over there, but they're really hard to find. They're really hard to find. And then in the Brazos Valley, there's a lot of Bigfoot reports. So a lot of them are older, but I wouldn't mind going and exploring those areas to see if we can find any, any current Bigfoot activity whether it's tree bins or we are able to maybe have hopefully find some footprints or uh, maybe some hair samples or something like that. Uh, that would be great. That is what I want to do. That's what I want to accomplish. Uh, Amanda and I are going to explore here in Texas first. Once we get this going and we start getting the shows out every week or every two weeks or whatever it's going to be for you guys, uh, along with the podcasts and whatever else we're doing, um, will basically be um you know traveling and i'd like to like i said i'd like to start in texas and as this gets going i would like to expand it out uh, i'd like to go to oklahoma because i know there's a lot of bigfoot reports in oklahoma texas louisiana border um there's i know there's a lot of swamp area in there and maybe we can meet up with somebody that lives down in that area that has bigfoots uh, because i know the texas Louisiana border is a major hot spot for bigfoots um, it's more, it's just more secluded and, you know, not the people that live out there aren't going to basically be t telling everybody, oh, there's Bigfoot's on my property. Uh, I know in Joe's area, it's extremely hard to get anybody to commute, talk about it. You know, even with Joe introducing me to somebody that he knows has had Bigfoot activity on their property or has seen a Bigfoot or has experienced something on his property. Uh, it's really hard to kind of break that ice and then get them to kind of slowly but surely kind of melt a little bit and then kind of tell me what, what they experienced. So, and I know that a lot of people out there are afraid of being, um, you know, told they're crazy or, oh, you, you didn't really see a Bigfoot or whatever, just being teased. And, and that's just really sad, you know? So, I mean, Anyways, uh, the, I hate I hate people that do that to people. So, yeah, um, just a lot of stuff going on. Um, I want to do, I finally got the office somewhat cleaned up. Um, I got to clean out the, <laughs> I call it the closet of doom. But it's just paranormal gear. 20 years worth of paranormal gear just sitting in there. Cords, cameras, microphones, um, night vision technology, all this other crap that's just sitting in there. And some of it, we just can't use. It's just the, because the technology has come up so high now that my, even my computer won't accept it. YouTube won't accept anything that's not under um, nine, um, I think it's nine megabytes, nine gigabyte. No, I'm sorry. 
9 megapixels, excuse me. Uh, I've been up for, <laughs> I'm tired. Uh, I'm going in, getting some meat and going to bed. But yeah, I mean, it's just, there's just a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, we've bought a crap ton of new gear. We've got a, we're just ready. We're, we're truly a production company now. We are ready. Uh, we're just looking for other pieces to add in. Uh, if you'd like to be a camera person, um, like I said, we're looking for camera people to volunteer to come out to different locations with us. Um, you're welcome to investigate with us, uh, but we do need somebody that knows what they're doing behind the camera. Uh, we need um, somebody that knows how to possibly do audio. Uh, in the future, we're going to be looking for people that can do editing uh, because I just don't have time unless it's unless I somehow make this a full-time job. Editing all this, all these hours of video now, it's just really difficult for me. So I have a friend that's going to be helping me, but we need we need more people like that that are willing to donate their time to uh, review footage and possibly tell me, okay, you know, it's just cut it down into clips. Okay, this is where you saw the Bigfoot. This is, you know, this, this is that. This is this looks like evidence. Hey, this is where you found the hair sample. Um, this is where you heard the scream. Um, this is where the ghost lights up the K2s. Um, you know, this is where you're the disembodied voice, whatever it's going to be. Um, or maybe that's where you saw the flying saucer or the aliens pop out of the UFO, which I'm still waiting on, by the way. Uh, if you UFO, if you aliens are watching, I want to see you pop out of a, a UFO for me so I can say, yep, yep, they're real. Uh, anyways, you know, um, like I said, I don't expect anyone to believe in anything paranormal until they've had an experience where they can say it could be anything else. But, and like I always say, you can apply that to anything. Um, be it Bigfoot, ghost, UFO, you know, even if you're a believer, but you've never seen one, whatever it is, put, you know, you can put all those things back in there. Um, I always say you should take it with a major grain of salt. You want real evidence. You want something that you can say that it couldn't be anything else. You know what I mean? So, all right, guys, this is getting a little long. Um, I will try and get more podcasts out this week and next week and, and continue to get this going again. I apologize for the lack of podcasts. I think you guys are going to get some shorter podcasts. Normally I do about an hour, but uh, and I'll try and get those done in the office. But as work continues to be crazy and my life continues to just be pulling me in every direction they can possibly pull me in, uh, I'm going to have to just use the phone to basically record these and uh, again i hope the audio is not too loud and i hope it's clear uh for you because i am just using this little mic down here uh i had it up here last time and it sounded like i was absolutely screaming into the mic so i'm hoping with it down about eight inches away from my my mouth that you can clearly hear me but you don't hear um me screaming so all right guys well you guys stay safe you keep it paranormal and we will catch you on the next one